Earlier today, we released uh, another one of our kit open source projects. This one is called Gesture Kit, and it was uh, pretty much born out of the uh, frustration of dealing with Unity's touch system. Uh, we're pretty used to working with uh, touches in native code directly, and the way iOS does things makes it way, way easier than, than the way Unity does things. So uh, we figured we would bring some of the stuff that we're used to using and and uh, use often on the native side to the Unity side as well. So the big difference between uh, touch processing on Unity and native side is Unity uses structs for the touches. And uh, as you pass a struct around, it's, uh, it's copied each time it's passed to a different method. So there's no good way to, to hold on to a reference to a struct. And uh, what a lot of people end up doing is just storing finger IDs all over the place and looping through the touches and uh, looking for finger IDs. And, you know, that, that's just way too uh, cumbersome for uh, from what we're used to. So what we did is we uh, we made Gesture Kit. Uh, Gesture Kit takes, uh, takes this touch idea and uh, it uh, instead of making the touch a struct, we actually have a class that's our GK touch. And uh, this GK touch uh, conveniently also works with the mouse. So uh, you can see there's some stuff here, uh, if deft out, and that's, uh, that's just so web players and uh, desktop and all that fun stuff, anything with a mouse can still use Gesture Kit with uh, the same exact code. The mouse, will, uh, the mouse input will just be turned into GK touches. So uh, the advantage of the GK touch now is uh, we, uh, we just create one GK touch for each finger and you can set the default number of fingers you want to deal with. Uh, uh, Gesture Kit uh, will default to two, so it, uh, you can set that to whatever. If, if you're dealing with more than two touches, and you can just bump it up, but uh, we tend to not deal with any more than two because uh, once you get up into four, then you're in Apple's territory, and you start ending up uh, using their overriding their gestures there, and your app just ends up closing while people are trying to play around with it. Okay, so the GK Touch class will uh, allow you to actually just store a reference to it. So uh, what you can do is, is as you're looking at touches, you can just store the GK touch in your class and when uh, when the touch changes, your uh, GK touch object is, you know, because it's a class, is just a pointer, it's gonna change with it. So that uh, that allows you to uh, to write a lot cleaner code and uh, it also makes your code a lot more reusable. So we'll, uh, we'll just run through uh, the demo scene here and, and kind of show you what it has and uh, and then we'll just uh, show one example this isn't going to be too in-depth so the the demo scene itself just has a, a bunch of stuff here let's look at the buttons it's just a bunch of buttons uh, these are the built-in recognizers that are that come with gesture kit out of the box we have uh, tap which is just uh, you know your standard touch and release and uh, a tap has to be less than a certain duration so you can set that duration to whatever you want long press would be like a, a touch and hold and it uh, defaults to 0.5 seconds but of course uh, you can just change that to whatever you want pan is uh, like a click and drag and I just added this so this is pan so it'll actually uh, it'll give you a translation of uh, of what the finger is doing and uh, you know really neat thing about the pan is uh, is it'll actually work with two fingers. So right now I'm doing a, a two finger here. Uh, this is uh, using Unity uh, Remote and it'll just uh, it'll use the centroid of the of the touches so you could even do it with three fingers if you wanted and uh, it'll take the center point of all those touches so that you still end up with smooth translation whether it's a mouse, a single finger, or multiple fingers. Uh, you can see up here we're getting some some logs here some uh, these found touch unity forgot to end so uh, another neat thing about uh, gesture kit is uh, unity has a, a pretty nasty habit of, of just not ending touches and it's uh, a real pain in the butt to code around so gesture kit will actually handle it for you if ever uh, gesture kit finds a touch that unity did not end it will go ahead and, uh, and run it through the ended phase for you so you don't have to have any more hacks in your code to deal with that uh, so and remove the, all the gesture recognizers and uh, pinch is uh, is pretty much the gesture you'd expect. It's the standard pinch to zoom, and uh, you know it, it works 
pretty much how you'd expect. Rotation, same thing. So uh, you can do your standard little rotation here. And I'm going to remove all those. And you can see mist touches all the time. It's way worse with the Unity remote, but it's, it's pretty bad uh, no matter which way you look at it. All right, so uh, we'll just look at one example here. So uh, this one's a tap recognizer. So all we do is create the tap recognizer. Uh, this is optional, but you can actually set a frame. So in this case, we set the frame to 00, 300, 300. So let's go ahead and, and play with this here. So we added the tap recognizer, and we can see I'm, I'm clicking here, but it's not logging anything. And that's because it's we set the frame to be uh, 00, 0, and then 300 height by 300 width. So essentially this area right here is the only one. And you can see when I click this, we're now recognizing. But out here, we're not. So uh, that's totally optional. You can, if you have a specific boundary frame that you want uh, your gestures to be recognized in, you can go ahead and use this property. Otherwise, just uh, leave it blank and it'll be full screen. So the gesture recognizers have a gesture recognized event and it passes in the recognizer. And then you can see uh, in this case, we're just dumping it to the log. And that's all these logs you're seeing up here. And then uh, once you have your, you've, you've created your recognizer, you've configured it, you just say gesture kit, add gesture recognizer. That's it. The event will start firing whenever, uh, whenever it happens. And you can see every one of these is the exact same thing. We're just creating a gesture recognizer, adding an event, and then adding the gesture recognizer. And that's, uh, that's really all there is to actually using gesture, gesture kit. Uh, so all these gestures, uh, you know, it's great. We include all these, all the, all the most basic stuff with it, but you're going to want to most likely start creating uh, your own kind of stuff. So maybe you want to have a, a gesture recognizer for different letters or, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, maybe like, uh, you know, kanji type things for doing spells and you can do all that, uh, with gesture kits and entirely made to be extended. And if you do anything that's uh, nice and generic, do feel free to send us a pull request and we'll, uh, we'll get it in the main line. So th this is the anatomy of, of a gesture recognizer. This is, uh, this is pretty much what you'd be doing if you were making your own. You just make your, ge your gesture recognizer class inherit from GK abstract gesture recognizer. And all you need to do is implement three methods. Touches began, touches moved, touches ended. So you can do whatever you want in these. This is 100% up to you how it works or how your gesture is going to work. So it, gestures will always start out in the state of possible. Once you're, uh, once you've actually uh, ready to, to say that like you want to take the next step in your state, you can set your state to began. And you know, none of the states matter except for failed and recognized. So you're free to toggle between possible and began. Uh, they're basically like little markers so you can uh, you can help yourself keep track of things. So the, the basic pattern we uh, we do is, uh, in this case, we're looking for uh, a number of taps. And let's say we get a touch. And once we've gotten past the number of taps required, as long as we're still in the possible state, we're going to go ahead and set ourselves to the began state. So once we're in the began state, as the touches move, we can just check. We can say, have we began? And if we have, we just make sure that that touch didn't move too far. So we just check the square magnitude and, uh, and if it moves too far, we then set the state to failed. And uh, if it's, in this case, and touch has ended, what we do here is uh, we make sure that uh, the touch was short enough. So make sure it's, uh, it's less than this uh, max duration. And if it is, we just set it to recognized and that's it. It'll fire the event automatically for you. It'll then reset the touches for you uh, the tracking touches, that is. Tracking touches is a, a field on the GK abstract gesture recognizer. And that's uh, that's basically, uh, you, you just add touches to that. And whenever you add a touch to that, the gesture kit will look through the touches. And when it calls touches moved or touches ended, it won't call either of these methods unless it gets uh, some action from one of the touches you've added to tracking touches. So this, again, simplifies your your touch handling in, uh, in all of your your code because you're only dealing with the touches that, that you asked for. Uh, I have this pulled up over here. So this is actually just running on an iPad mini. 
and uh, it's a it's a lot easier to to see how it works uh, running on an actual device because uh, you know as you know Unity Remote is uh, is pretty horrendous. So I'm going to add the pan recognizer. I'm going to add the pinch recognizer and the rotation. So I have all three of those on there, and you can see uh, you know we get rotation and it, it moves smoothly as we're rotating because uh, if you remember the pan recognizer uh, can be configured so that it won't start panning until it has two touches and that's what, what we did in this particular case so you can see uh, in the in the demo scene if we're if we're running on a device we just set the minimum number of touches to two and that's really just to smooth things out because when you're dealing with pinches and rotations you're gonna have two fingers on the screen so if uh, if you have your pan recognizer set to work with just one finger, it, it gets a little wonky, but this keeps it nice and smooth. And you can see we have all the little stuff you're used to in iOS. All right, that's it. Basic intro to Gesture Kit. Uh, it's available on GitHub, so feel free to download it and give it a play.